Okay, so that's a, just a, an introduction really into some of the product data elements of the system. Um, I'm going to start now looking at some of the things like the production routes uh, as, as a bit of detail as well and start to think about how we can actually schedule uh, activities and how we can schedule production uh, in the system as well. So I'm just going to go to release products back into there. Okay, took a while we've got there. Um, what I'm going to do here again is look for my product and against that product I'm going to look at the engineer tab again and I'm going to look at the root definition. So again we have the same concepts as we have for materials. I've got root versions, different sites, different date effectivities, different from quantities and approval and activation to those. And in this case you'll see that we've actually got three stages, three op operations um, within this particular production route. Now the important part about this of course is yes you have the ability to define the times, the setup time, the run time, the queue after times, etc. But we've also got the ability to define the resources that we actually want to schedule this particular production activity against. Um, so what we can start to do in here is put together the different rules that we want to establish. Now first thing I might want to do is actually specify what's called a resource group. So the resource group you can think of as a team of people or it might be a bank of machines etc. So we're saying here that I need one resource from that particular bank of people or machines. I can carry on adding new requirements onto this as well. So as well as choosing from that particular resource group, I can say it needs to be a particular resource type, I can see it, say it needs to have a certain capability level and where we are talking about HR, I can people, I can start to talk about their skills so here, for example, I can choose skills from that we've defined in the HR part of the system. Uh, I can specify the skill level requirement that they need to have against that as well. So what sort of skill capability do they need to have? Now, as well as skills, I can also say what courses have they attended. So have they attended this certain course for this type of material handling, for example? It may be what certificates have they got. Have they got the right certificate? Is it, ex is it valid at this point in time? Has it not expired? Um, controls for things like certificates for particular pieces of machinery and so forth. Um, and finally I can choose the title. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're using all of these as um, ways of actually defining the resources that the system is actually going to select when we do our scheduling activities. So you can get very sophisticated there in terms of how you're actually building up the, uh, the scheduling engine so to speak. So if we go to production, we go into the production part of the system and again I'm going to go into production orders so we'll see here all the different works orders or production orders we have they of course have a status against them a delivery date that those are required and of course many times these are coming out of master planning uh, master planning having run effectively MRP to actually come up with a list of suggested requirements uh, MRP and master planning of course is a great big topic in its own right that we haven't really got time to get involved with today but it's certainly a, a sophisticated part of the system uh, but once we have generated those suggestions we can then see how we're actually taking those forward and actually working with them. So in this case what I just wanted to do is show you that we've got a couple of works orders here for the products that we've been looking at and I've got the option to do some scheduling activities at this point. So what we can choose to do is do scheduling at two levels and I'll just discuss those before we go into them. But I can do what's called operation scheduling which you may think of as rough cut capacity planning or we can do job scheduling which is the detailed level of capacity planning. Uh, and scheduling. Both very similar in terms of the operation, it's just the level of detail at which you're actually doing the scheduling down to. So with job scheduling we are looking at doing that at a very very finite, very detailed level. We want to know exactly the minute that that production order should start and the, the, the time it's due to finish etc. So what we can do is we can actually start to think about our scheduling now and we can start to think about the what's called the scheduling direction. So this could be on a forward scheduling basis where we're loading up the planning board essentially uh, starting at the soonest opportunity and going forward or at a specified start date or we could work on a backwards basis. So whether we're working on a just in time or as soon as possible type method we can choose the actual uh, way of doing it there from within the system. So I'm going to go forward from today for example. I can of course choose a start or an end date and time and work from there. Um, and I can also do things like choose the, the limitations. Now in here, for example, I can choose whether I'm working on a finite capacity basis, 
bioopacity, of course, means that we're actually putting a cap on the amount of time that is available. So I can activate that. I can also say that I actually want to schedule and make sure that the materials are available as well. So if we're working on a finite material basis, it's going to consider that as it goes through its um, selection. It's no good me having you know, stacks of capacity to do this immediately if I haven't got the materials coming in until next week. So by ticking the box there to say, yes, use finite materials, it's going to obey that rule. I can also do what's called property-based scheduling. Now, property-based scheduling becomes very useful if you want to actually group together like products, similar products, to actually eliminate any setup time between um, activities. So by saying that I'm going to use property-based scheduling, I may be doing the black products all together because they should all be painted at the same time, even though they may be completely different product sets, for example. So property scheduling helps us with those sort of uh, scenarios and uh, circumstances. You do also have options to do cancellation, so I can actually start to cancel, cancel transport times and overlap times if I, if I need to as part of my scheduling activity. Now, in this case, we're just looking to schedule one works order, but I could actually have many in this list. And when we have many, we actually might want to also schedule by priority. So we may want to say there are certain orders within this list that I want to make higher priority for more important customers or for, for other reasons. But I want to say these are the ones that I actually want loading and consuming capacity first before any other works orders do uh, within the system. So that can be a very important part of the system as well in terms of that definition. One final point that we can do within the scheduling as well, we can also do what's called schedule of references and synchronization of references. This is where we may have lower levels work orders, for example, for sub-assemblers. What I might want to do, of course, is sh schedule the top level works order, and all of the lower level sub-assemblers then will be scheduled and synchronized uh, accordingly uh, for that one particular end product that we're actually making. Now, once we have done a level of scheduling, we can then use the Gantt chart view to actually look at uh, our availability. So here we're actually looking at this um, by resource view. So these are the work centers or work cells that we're actually choosing to go into. And from there, I'm drilling into the individual works orders and the processes involved. Likewise, I can switch back to my production order view. Uh, and here we see the two production orders that we've been working with uh, and looking at in content. So you'll see here we've got things like summary bars, for example. You'll also see that we've got the individual stages now broken down with the actual um, resources that it's going to be used actually allocated. So 102 is a particular person, 201 is another, 302 is another. Uh, now we are using numbers here, you may prefer to use, for example, the, the initials of the people, but that again is up to you as to how that's defined. But what you'll see is that we've also got an indicator for the required delivery date here. So this was actually wanting to be completed for 10 o'clock this morning, but you'll see we've actually gone over that. Uh, where we, ha we are using late activities here, you'll see those hatched in red as well. Now this is actually a drag and drop environment, so if we were to move the and I wanted to move this into a following day's production, I can just drag and drop that, schedule the jobs around that, etc. Now this is actually a play pit type environment. Nothing's going to happen to this schedule until I choose to actually save this back. But it's a great area where I can drag and drop, get all my schedules happy, um, and get to where I need to be. Uh, and of course, I can also use the undo button there to get back to where I was previously. Another view of this particular screen is the ability to just right click on a resource and say, show me a histogram. So this is basically, if we just look at the details here, uh, I'm seeing a, a, a histogram. Now, where it is filled in in blue, that means we are using standard capacity. But of course, where it goes into red, we're actually over capacity. So I've allowed myself there to actually work on an infinite capacity basis. And it's straight away telling me that I'm actually going to need to use this person for more than their standard eight hours a day. And this is showing me the number of hours that I am going to need. And again, as we drag and drop and move those around, that moves accordingly uh, relating to that. So lots of tools there. There are lots of other things you can do in terms looking at time scales, looking whether you're showing the grid or not, looking at the interval, you're looking at this over. Uh, you can zoom into different levels. You can change how the colors are represented so you can have different color blocks for different product types, etc. So lots of different ways of actually manipulating that particular view to get it exactly how you want it. So this is a great area for letting production planners essentially um, do their work.